Hey everybody! So, we've already learnt about some basic ways that you can separate mixtures, and now we're going to look at some of the more complex ways that scientists separate uh, the different components out of a mixture. So, in the last video, we learnt about a process called sedimentation, where if you have a mixture that's a suspension, then you can just leave it standing and gravity will pull the sediment to the bottom and then it will separate and you'll have the liquid at the top. But for some suspensions, and blood is an example, for suspensions, sometimes the sediment doesn't fall to the bottom no matter how long you leave it, and that's the case with blood. So scientists have come up with this method for separating that sediment down to the bottom, and it's called centrifuging. And it uses a machine called a centrifuge, which you can see here looks just like a small merry-go-round. And that's the basic principle. If you think back to when you used to play on merry-go-rounds at the playground, when the merry-go-round starts to spin, you can feel yourself being pulled outward by the rotating force. And in the centrifuge, the same force happens on the mixture. So as the centrifuge spins around, it basically increases the force of gravity and it pulls and pulls the sediment down to the bottom of the container that it's sitting in. So it uses rotation to separate the sediment. And this is really important in the medicine field Often, blood needs to be separated from the plasma, which is the liquid part of your blood. And centrifuges are used there. They're also used in other research labs to separate DNA from the liquid that, they're, that it's dissolved in. Okay, the next method. This method is really useful if you have a solution of one thing dissolved in another. In this example, we've got salt dissolved in water, so just seawater. Well, the hard thing is you can't use a filter for a solution and you can't use sedimentation or centrifuging because the dissolved particles are too small to catch. So this method uses the fact that you can evaporate water and it's called, surprisingly enough, evaporation. And then the second part is crystallization. So we join them together into the same process. So for this method, you take your solution and you put it out in the sun or you heat it up over a Bunsen burner and that will evaporate all the water. But Whatever is dissolved in the water doesn't evaporate because that was originally a solid. So what's left over is just the solid salt crystals. So evaporation is basically evaporating the liquid part of a solution. And then at the end, it leaves behind crystals. If you used to drive down past Geelong, there was a big salt plant out there. And you can see here um, from the aerial view, it looks like big fields, but these are full of water. 
from the ocean, which is just which it's connected to. So they would pump water in and then leave that seawater in the fields to evaporate and it would leave behind salt crystals. And over time, they ended up farming piles and piles of salt, which then they can send off to be processed and it gets sold as table salt for using in your food. Okay, the next method. This method is also useful for separating solutions and it's called distillation. So distillation is one of the most complicated ones, but it uses three main parts to separate the mixture. Firstly, you need a flask containing your mixture, whatever solution you want to separate. And you need a heat source to heat up the mixture and start to evaporate the water out of it. And then also you need a tube that you can't see it on the diagram, but it actually has a thin tube going through it with water surrounding it. And that is called the condenser. And then you have a flask at the bottom which collects the water. So the way that distillation works is the heat source starts to heat your mixture and then the as the water evaporates and turns to steam, the steam flows up the flask and then as all gases do, it starts to flow through whatever area it can. And so the gas, the hot steam flows through the condenser, but the condenser is full of cold water surrounding the tube. So the, as the gas, as the steam goes through the condenser, it turns back into liquid water which falls through the final tube into the flask at the bottom. So by the end of it, you have perfectly clear, pure water, which you might have heard before is called distilled water. So overall distillation, it separates mixtures by condensing the evaporated water. So it evaporates the water and then it condenses it again. So then whatever is left behind in the original flask, it will be separate from the pure water that you've collected in the other flask. This is the basic method of distillation, but distillation is used in lots of different areas. Um, it's used to separate all the different chemicals that are found in oil. So at oil refineries. And that's how we can get petrol for cars and how we can get kerosene to fly aeroplanes and how we can get natural gas as well. But Distillation is also used for separating out particular chemicals, and these can be used in things like perfumes for us to isolate particular chemicals that smell good to put into perfumes, and we can also collect certain chemicals to use as food flavours. As well. So the benefits of distillation are it purifies and perfectly separates your mixture. So it's very effective. The negative, it's more difficult than some of the simple methods like decanting.
Okay, the last process we're learning about separating mixtures. So this one is called chromatography. Chromatography, originally it was invented for separating out coloured materials that are mixed into a solution. And in particular, things like inks and dyes for making different paints and different coloured compounds, which are useful um, all over the place. So chromatography, it's based on the fact that different materials move at different speeds. So what you do is, for the basic method of chromatography, you put a line of your coloured material, of your mixture, on some paper, and then you drop the paper into some water, but only so that the water is just touching the bottom of the paper. And then, slowly, water from the container will slowly seep through the paper, and it will carry that coloured mixture up the paper. And what scientists discovered is that some different colours, or the chemical that makes up those colours, move at different speeds. So by the end of the process, you can see that what started as a single coloured ink, we can actually see is made of yellow, red, and purple. So there's actually three different colours of ink in this one ink. So chromatography separates materials based on how fast they move. So that's the simple method of chromatography, but modern technology has big machines that use gas chromatography. And these are really common in lots of different industries. Um, things like they can separate out drugs from blood samples, and so chromatography is used for drug testing in sport and in the medical field too. Um, it's also used in food and alcohol so that companies can test how much of a particular ingredient is in their food. And it's also used for creating new drugs, and in particular new vaccines. Because it helps scientists to separate out particular chemicals that can be useful to use as a drug, or to, to take and change slightly to make a new drug. Okay, so these are all the methods of separating mixtures that we'll need to learn.